I did not have any high hopes for getting any good games in 2024, especially after all the great titles that came out the year before. I still believe that The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, Alan Wake 2 and Baldur's Gate 3 are among the most impressive and most important games of the century. But after all the bad news about layoffs and working conditions, as well as some really bad titles coming from actually quite good studios, I have to admit I was not expecting much. However, only in January, Palworld came out and broke one record after the other. No one really expected this game to go off like this. It sold over 7 million copies in the first week and beat all the other games on Steam except for PUBG in terms of consecutive player numbers. And while many people obviously enjoyed the game, it is a very good game, there was also a lot of drama, mostly from the fact that the game has some very obvious similarities to Pokemon. If you want to get a picture of what the game is like and if you might enjoy playing it, there is a lot of people playing it on YouTube or on Twitch that you can go watch. But what I want to do today is to take a look at all the discussions around the game. Why people like it, why they hate it and what it might mean for future games. So let's go through the accusations one by one. The first one being artificial intelligence. There is a lot of people on the internet who claim that Pocket Pair, the company making Pal World, is using AI to make their game. And you have probably seen some of those tweets or Reddit posts somewhere, they are all over the place. The reasoning for this is that, well, some of the game assets do actually look like what you would expect to get if you ask JetGPT or Midjourney to come up with some designs that look very similar to one game or the other. But also because Pocket Pair has so far treated the topic quite fondly, with some of their employees talking very highly about the technology and how beneficial it could be for game development. They even made a game called AI Artist, which specifically deals with, well, AI art and how similar it can be to art created by actual humans. However, so far this is all speculation. There is no proof that AI has been used in any way whatsoever. And truth be told, I have a hard time to see how anyone would be able to actually prove that. Even if you'd have the complete source code of the game, it wouldn't tell you if Pocket Pair had used one AI tool or the other at some point in development. If they did, however, that would be a bit of a bigger deal, since they should have stated that fact in their game description on Steam, which they didn't. But let's face it, Valve is probably making a lot of money on that game too, so I don't think that they are in a hurry to investigate those claims. If you ask me, I think that, yes, they probably did have some kind of mid-journey Pokemon creator script set up to make their PAL designs. At least I think they would be very stupid not to. What I mean with this is that the game, in my opinion, clearly intends to jump onto the cultural bandwagon that is Pokemon, which in and of itself is not a bad thing. We have seen this over and over again with many franchises like Digimon or even Yu-Gi-Oh to some extent, but more on that later. My point is that the PALs are obviously supposed to look very similar to Pokemon. Of course, not close enough to be a legal issue, but no one can tell me that Pocket Pair did not want their players to think of Pokemon when they look at their creatures, in which they obviously succeeded, wasting a perfectly good artist on this, in my opinion, very uncreative task of style copying seems to me quite ineffective. AI tools are way more suited for this. I do have a very specific view on AI, which might be a bit more controversial, but hear me out. While still very impressive, I believe many people very much overestimate what AI is actually capable of. This might be because of the way media depicted AI for centuries now, from Terminator to the Avengers. I actually made a video a while ago about how AI is depicted in Nier Automata. If you're interested, make sure to check it out, link is below. But there are actually two people who could put this in way better words than I ever be able to. The first is current Twitch CEO and former AI engineer at NASA, Dan Clancy. Much of human intelligence isn't just about doing math or playing chess. Doomers have this idea that A, this horrible thing is gonna happen, I think they're just flat out wrong. They also have this idea that for some reason they think they can sit around and come up with a solution. Some bad things will happen with AI. I'm, bad, bad things happen with every invention. So I think it's just fallacy that A, they can figure out what bad's gonna happen and B, that they can come up with an intervention. And I think they grossly exaggerate. Let's look at this room right now. 
okay? Suppose I'm not in this room and you're gonna describe this room to me through a linear sequence of words. Then suppose suddenly I appeared in this room. I didn't know it's the one you described to me. Would I recognize it? Probably not. Now, suppose you did a painting of this room. It's still not the same as the room, but I might recognize the room. I think we think three-dimensionally. We use logic, but in the end, there's something in your gut that leads to that decision. And I think that is the way our brain works. And the linear sequence of thoughts that you put into words is about as affected as a linear description of this room. It's just a very limited projection of a three-dimensional thought that you have. And the other one would be Apple co-founder and engineer Steve Wozniak. AI is really training computers, giving them methods that they can actually teach themselves and learn at such high speeds, millions of times a second, a billion times a second. No human being could do that kind of learning. But it's not like the way the brain works at all. It's just high-level computer stuff. It's generally a task. It's a very simple task done over and over. It's a dumb-level job, dumber than any... No human being would be assigned such a, a dumb job unless they were totally dumb. Machines along for a long time have replaced muscles to build cars and do everything else, but now they're getting up to where, oh, they can do some of what we call thinking, but it's not thinking like a real brain. It's not like a brain who says, oh, here's what I'm being asked, and here's how I'm going to go find it. Yeah. No, no, never once has AI been asked, what should I do next? It just doesn't work like a human. It, it sees a picture of a dog, and it knows what a picture of a dog is better than a human but it doesn't know that the dog has arms and legs and eyes. Yeah. AI or large language models and machine learning, which is the technology behind that marketing term, are very incredible achievements. But in the end, they are still tools that have to be used by humans in some way or another. A lot of the discussion nowadays reminds me of the time that photography was the new and up and coming tech. And Painters complained that photographs were cheating, they were lifeless. And sometimes they were even afraid rightfully so, that they'd make their work, which was quite often portraits or more practical images, obsolete. But think about where photography is now and how it became a integral part of our culture and our society. Another interesting example would be the movie Tron from 1982, which according to IMDb was disqualified from being nominated for the Oscars in special effects. The reason was that they used computers for the special effects, which the Academy considered cheating. Just think about it. Things change, but that is not necessarily a bad thing. But, and there is a big but, I don't want to just sing praises on AI here. There are some things we should be aware of. The first would in fact be the velocity or the speed that this new technology has been unleashed onto us, especially upon the entertainment industry. This is really shaking things up. The problem here is, from my point of view, that even if people are open to adopting this technology. Not everyone currently working in art, games or whatever has the time to quickly nerd themselves into understanding it well enough to use efficiently. And that is what will cost a lot of people jobs. And companies might struggle too. Especially smaller businesses are often not set up in a way that they can experiment much. They have enough trouble effectively serving their existing customer base. Don't forget, not every business is a Silicon Valley startup with a huge amount of venture capitalist money just lying around. While some people from the neoliberal camp might now start with their typical that's the market and it's always right or only the strong and fast survive phrases. If you know me, you know that I don't really like that wish-wash way of thinking. But I am drifting off. I do believe that one of the reasons we band up in societies and have governments is to protect ourselves and control these kinds of economical or technological changes. Which is the reason why proper regulation and keeping the discourse going are actually quite important. And the other thing to be aware of is, well, those AI models have to be trained somehow. Which is where we get into the fun realm of copyrights. I am trying to keep the talk about copyright and AI separate, since I think that a lot of people focus more on the technology and not enough on what the technology is used for. However, I am aware that especially in the current day and age with cases like PAL World, there is a very close connection. And if we talk about one thing, we will likely talk about 
the other. Now, if you take a look at Pal World, there is no way you haven't immediately thought about Pokemon. The creature design is eerily similar, but still, they never outright copy any designs. It's more like Pocket Pair found a safe with the secret formula that Game Freak uses to make sure that any of the 100 new Pokemon that they make for each generation confirms with their brand guidelines. Now, I don't know anything about the internal works of Game Freak or Nintendo, but as the game devs among you might know, there actually are documents like this in many companies that work with a recognizable IP. These similarities are the reason why some people on the internet got very excited, giving the game the moniker Pokemon with guns and looking forward to a more adult version of their favorite childhood game. And others got quite fed up, accusing Palworld of being a cheap copy and kind of trying to make money off the good memories they had with Pokemon while simultaneously almost making fun of it. I mean, if you think about it, if someone had told me a year ago, hey, we should make Pokemon, but give them guns. I would have thought they were memeing. So far, Pokemon or Nintendo haven't sued, but they did say that they are aware of the situation. The CEO of Pocket Bear, however, says that they checked all the legal prerequisites to make sure that they are within their rights publishing the game as it is. Now, Japan has a lot of quite complicated laws, if I remember correctly, but I am not a lawyer, especially not a Japanese one, so take everything that I say with a grain of salt. Fact is, however, that we know Nintendo is infamous for taking quick and decisive legal action against anything that as much as looks the wrong way at one of their IPs. This is something that many content creators had to experience themselves. The biggest example that comes into my mind would be Point Crow, who almost got his whole channel taken down for playing modded Zelda games. There has also been already a mod of Pal World that replaced the in-game models with characters and creatures from the actual Pokemon franchise. And Nintendo was taking actions against this faster than most people were able to write their articles. I mean, honestly, dude, what did you expect? My point being, Nintendo can take care of themselves legally. So I think that if there was any obvious thing that they could do, they would have already done it. Palworld has been in development for almost three years and the promotional images with their creatures have been out for a while, yet nothing has happened. So I guess the legal situation is not necessarily in Nintendo's favor at the moment. However, since the modders are not able to get their hands onto Nintendo IPs, they are now turning Pal World into a Digimon game. We also shouldn't forget that there have been a lot of Pokemon clones within the last 20 years or so. Some of them ended up being very successful IPs themselves. I remember when I was young, there were a lot of people saying that it was unethical to watch Digimon since it was just a cheap Pokemon clone. Or maybe you remember the Monster Rancher show? That one didn't get as famous, but worked out fine. And even Dragon Quest, which is a huge deal in Japan, had a game called Dragon Quest Monsters, which was very Pokemon-like. As a matter of fact, the first Dragon Quest game released in 1986, a full 10 years before the first Pokemon game released. And if you do a quick Google search, you will find posts from even back then that accused Pokemon of copying their designs from Dragon Quest, whose main character designer, by the way, was Akira Toriyama, most well known for his other big creation. Dragon Ball. Also, both Lufia 2 and, probably more importantly, Shin Megami Tensei are two games that pop into my head that released before Pokemon and heavily featured aspects that definitely had a huge impact on Pokemon's design. Also, Pokemon is currently at a point where they apparently even copy themselves, which is legally completely irrelevant. But I'm just wondering where exactly the difference is between that guy and that guy. Also, a thing that I quickly want to mention is that Pokemon has been accused a few times already to steal their designs from smaller creators or fan artists. Now, I don't know how much truth there is to these claims, but I thought I'd put it out there that those statements exist. Do with that whatever you want. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, I guess you're actually quite interested in what I have to say. So, why not show that to YouTube by pressing the like button, subscribing to my channel, and maybe even leaving a short comment under the video to boost engagement. It's free, it only takes a minute, and you'd help me more than you'd think. Thank you. With all those things about one IP copying another being said, this brings me to a more philosophical point, which could probably fill a whole video in and of itself. So sorry if I don't cover every single aspect in detail, but what actually is 
creativity. When is a design or a creation actually your own? Because the last time I checked, in each creative profession, it is perfectly normal to use references or have your work be influenced by something. Writers, filmmakers, painters, if they are not influenced by some other work, then they are definitely influenced by something from nature. There are actually whole cultural movements which are dependent on the reuse of other people's work. Hip-hop, for example, is heavily influenced by sampling, which is taking phrases from other people work and puts them into new context. This allowed a whole class of people that were not that well off to express themselves in a way that was different from the established norms and carve out a very specific and unique identity. A lot of games that I personally love are actually mods or recreations from other games, Dota or League of Legends just being one example. A lot of progress in tech comes from open source projects and their ability to be reused and adapted by other people, which I personally respect the hell out of. I'm sitting here on a Linux PC and I play most of my games on a Steam Deck, which would probably never have been made if it were not for all the open source projects that have been stuffed into that device. Both journalism and academic work would be almost impossible if you were not able to sum somehow use the information of other people. It is quite a modern idea, coming with the advent of major scale capitalism, that the value of creativity comes from how it can be translated into making money. Ideas now need to be more than what they are in and of themselves, they have to be capital, which is where this dissonance comes from. Ideas or information are biased towards being shared, being traded, not being hoarded behind a paywall. And that is why copyright law is so weird and so complicated, because we are basically trying to twist a square peg to fit into a triangle hole. Now I get that we are living in a world and in a society where money is an important aspect. And while money does create a lot of problems, so far we have been better at controlling those problems than with other systems that we tried out. So at least until we are able to fix society on a larger scale, copyright laws are important to protect individuals who are dependent on creative work to support their livelihoods. But enough of my idealistic mumbo jumbo and let's go back to Pal World. There has actually been an artist who claimed that even the 3D models were blatantly stolen from Nintendo designs, which would be an issue that is more easily to understand since it is basically direct theft. However, since then this artist has admitted that he made all those claims up, apparently because he didn't like Pal World promoting animal cruelty, which I don't know, did he forget what the basic premise of Pokemon is? Some people like to play games because they're just pixels on a screen and whatever you do does not have an effect on people or animals. Pokemon is still the bigger brand. Yes, Pal World is breaking all the records at the moment and is way more successful than most people, including the developers, expected, but Pokemon is still the king. Just think about it from a cultural perspective. Many people are not playing Pal World because it is such a great new idea for a video game, but because of their fond memories of Pokemon. That Pal World is an absolutely solid and fun game certainly doesn't hurt, but let's face it, a lot of people playing it are basically Pokemon fans, who have been disappointed by the latest entries in the franchise. The latest Pokemon games are not that good. Scarlet and Violet are full of bugs, the story seems a bit lackluster, the replay value is low. Now you can still enjoy it, that's fine, that's even very good if you do, but many people don't and claim that they kind of expected more from the game. The same is kind of true for Pokemon Arceus. A lot of people really liked the idea of it, the new angle that it provided, but they also said that the game feels kind of empty and unfinished. And those Pokemon games are just a few examples of what you find in many game stores nowadays. A lot of huge ambitious games asking you to pay full price for a very underwhelming experience. Which can happen, experiences are subjective, but this critique is not new and has been stated a few times, especially for Pokemon. And there is enough feedback from the community that one might think that a company that makes as much money as Game Freak, since they have one of the biggest franchises in the world, should be able to implement them. It doesn't feel like the latest games are made out of a passion for making games, but rather out of a more capitalist safe decision that they just have to repeat the same thing that worked last time in order to have the best ratio of money made to risk involved. And that 
might seem logical from a business perspective, but good God, does it suck the life and fun out of a project. Pokemon will still be the bigger brand and the bigger cultural phenomenon because it is the one that started it. I'm sure that if there were no legal boundaries, Palworld would not be Palworld. But the devs would just say, hey, we made another Pokemon game. They want it to be a Pokemon game. They want to be part of that phenomenon. Because I think they actually love Pokemon. I honestly think that you could not make a project like that if you don't have a certain level of admiration for the thing that you draw inspiration from. But this is just how I see the situation. And only from the little bit of information that we have so far. Let me know in the comments if you agree with me or not. And as always, like, subscribe, say hi on threads, links down below the video. And other than that, have a great day and see you in the next video. Bye bye.